Norway, Kirkenes, summer 2013. Commercial boats call on this well-established seaport above the Arctic Circle each day. Today, four state-of-the-art vessels are here preparing to support oil and gas exploration in the Kara Sea. They are part of a fleet of 13 vessels engaged to explore this part of the Arctic, an effort led jointly by Rosneft and ExxonMobil. The team's objective is to build a 3D map of the geology below the Kara Sea in specific areas to evaluate possible future drilling locations. Estimates of um, experts, and these are Russian and international experts, are that the Russian Arctic could hold 30% um, of the remaining oil and gas uh, in the world. So we're, we're starting in the Kara Sea, um, but if we're successful there, if we have success, success in the seismic program and then the drilling and then the development, what it will mean, it will open up a whole new province or several provinces um, for oil and gas development throughout this century and probably into the next century. It has taken nearly two years to prepare for this expedition. Top international and Russian experts in 2D and 3D seismic surveying have laid out the plans, and the experienced crews on board each vessel have been working together to ensure that the effort will be successful. Seismic acquisition is a key tool that the oil and gas industry uses to explore and develop for resources globally. And it's a technique that we've been using for the last 50 years. Um, we use it in a 2D mode and a 3D mode. And it really helps us identify the areas that we want to drill in. As a driller, uh, besides identifying exactly where to drill, 3D seismic help also helps us identify pressures that we're going to encounter. And it helps us design the well better. To help, it helps us design the well so that we uh, understand all the, all the pressure risks and so that we can drill the well you know, safely and efficiently. It is August 7th. The Geo Celtic and its support fleet sail from Kirkenis on an expedition that is planned to last for 73 days. They head northeast through the Barents Sea, around Novaya Zemlya, and then into the Kara Sea in Russia. We have a very limited window each summer when we can actually operate in the Kara Sea, somewhere between July and August when the ice actually melts and the boats uh, can actually go into the Kara Sea area. As the expedition makes its way to the Kara Sea, the crew observes numerous dolphins and birds who call this area home. Throughout the expedition, the crews comply with all regulations, often going beyond what is required and adhering to the highest environmental protection standards. Естественно, мы осознаем свою полную ответственность за этот чрезвычайно хрупкий регион и делаем всё от нас зависящее для того, чтобы снизить хоть хоть какое-то, да, хоть какое-то возможное воздействие на природу этого региона при производстве наших работ. The major player in the seismic expedition fleet is the Geo Celtic a geophysical vessel capable of safely deploying advanced seismic technology into Arctic waters. For the next two months, the GeoCeltic will be the home to geophysicists and crew members. Because we have such a limited time span, they basically need to keep operating the 24-hour cycle so that we can get all the data we can. The food is hot and plentiful. The accommodations are pleasant and restful. The crew is fit for duty because the work goes on around the clock. The other ships involved in the expedition are support vessels, including several that will shuttle between the Kara Sea and the port of Kirkenis, bringing fresh supplies on a regular basis. Because of the remoteness of the area, special precautions such as ice monitoring and site surveys are taken to ensure safe sea voyages. One of the things we've done this summer is to perform ice defense trials in the Kara Sea. So we've actually taken a, a icebreaker vessel into the Kara Sea and we've uh, We've also used satellite providers, satellite image providers, and uh, as well as airplanes to test different uh, 
different pieces of technology that will help us identify ice to understand icebergs and ice flows to ensure that potentially hazardous ice doesn't contact the rig or inter interfere with operations. As the ships continue their journey into the Kara Sea, the ice is gone for the summer. But there are other obstacles. Plenty of timber in the cold water, fallen trees from sawmills, carried out to sea by flooding in the Yenisei River. The support vessels change their course to protect the Geocaltic's equipment. After all the planning and training, there is anticipation and excitement in the air as the crew begins the survey work. First, a marker buoy is put afloat. It marks the end of the trace cable in the sea. Then, seismic streamers, each six kilometers long, are deployed. The Geo-Celtic deploys 10 such streamers for this 3D seismic survey. 4,800 hydrophones fixed into the streamers every 12 and a half meters record reflected sound waves. The sound waves are generated by releasing compressed air from air guns pulled 600 meters behind the vessel. The sound waves are reflected by the various layers of rocks thousands of feet below the seabed. The hydrophones record all of the reflected seismic energy and the resulting huge amount of data is stored electronically on board the vessel. Scientists will later interpret those signals to understand what the layers under the seafloor look like and what they might contain. While seismic activity has not proven to be harmful to marine mammals, great care and precaution is taken to ensure that operations avoid them. In a technique known as soft start, air guns are started in a slower sequence, instead of all at once, so that the dolphins and whales that might be in the area can swim away from the gradually increasing sound levels. There are studies that have been made um, on a very scientific basis and they show that from a certain distance onwards there is no effect on sea mammals. But we do have um, so-called mammal observers on the boats, so we have a constant lookout um, while we are measuring this data and make sure that we are in a very, very large distance from these sea mammals. The vessel moves at a steady speed of 5 knots, 9 kilometers per hour, with a sound pulse created every 25 meters so that sound waves have time to travel down thousands of feet and back to the vessel. Now, after 74 days at sea, the Geo-Celtic returns to Kirkenis. Nearly 1,900 square kilometers have been recorded. An impressive 75 terabytes of data have been collected. One terabyte of audio in CD quality is the equivalent to listening to your favorite songs for nearly 2,000 hours. Once that data comes to shore, you need about a year to process the data so that a seismic interpreter can sit down and interpret the data in the first place. I think um, you know, we, we've, we've assembled a team here um, that um, are, from the ExxonMobil side, uh, the best we have and we, the, the team is working very well with their Rosneft counterparts. We can learn a lot from our Russian colleagues and hopefully they can learn a lot from our 90 years of Arctic experience. Drilling the first exploration well is scheduled for the summer of 2014. If ExxonMobil and Rosneft's estimates of the subsurface are fully realized, it could mean the discovery of a significant hydrocarbon basin. If we say that we can find oil in there, it's very important. Then, most likely, it will be a proof that there are new provinces and there will be only the beginning.